Hi there, it's Olga. Today I'm going to create a Halloween card that is light and bright rather than gloomy. And if you are looking for this type of Halloween designs, please join me for this video and uh, I'll show you exactly how to make this card. So let's get started. I have pre-cut a piece of watercolor paper to about 4 by 6 inches. And then I'm going to use this 3D embossing folder by Tim Holtz. This one is called Lumber. I'm going to apply Antique Linen Distress Oxide ink onto one side of the embossing folder. This is going to add some color along with all the texture that is created by this folder. So I'm placing my piece of paper inside, closing it up, and then I'm sending it through the die cutting machine. And here you can see all the amazing texture and uh, added color. Now I just have to apply some double-sided adhesive at the wrong side of uh, the embossed panel and I'm going to attach it to the card base that is slightly larger than a panel. It measures about four and a quarter by six and a quarter inches. And here is my background all done. I just have to attach some die cut images on top of it. And I'm going to use the new Poppy Stamps dies. They are Warm uh, Wishes gift card cup. Then there's Winter Berries, Magical Cauldron, Happy Jack O' Lantern, Happy Halloween Cat, Maple Trio, and Autumn Leaf Set. I've die cut everything out of white, black, craft, yellow and red cardstock. I've die cut more leaves than I'm gonna use, that is just to make sure I have enough. Before I start attaching all the elements onto the card front, I'm gonna add some inking and coloring to the die cuts. With this uh, berry branch, I'm going to take gathered twigs uh, distress marker, which is the dark brown, and I'm going to color all the branches, leaving the berries red. I'm going to color all the branches exactly the same way, and then I'm moving on to the leaves. To ink up the leaves, I'm going to use some Distress inks and I'm going to apply them with the, the finger daubers. It's a very convenient tool to work with the small die cuts. I've applied just a tiny bit of green here and there and then I made in uh, some orange. With the sponge daubers, it's very easy to create color variations and color transitions. When the colored ink is applied, I'm going to use the, the dark brown ink and go all over the edges of all the die cuts. The next image I'm gonna work on is that jack-o'-lantern. I've die cut it out of yellow paper, then applied some orange, and now I'm going over the edges with the brown ink again. As always, all the tools and supplies I'm using are gonna be listed on my blog as well as in the description down below the video. I'm also going to apply some uh, brown ink onto this little pot as well as the bigger cup, just to match all other die cuts in the card. The last die cut I'm gonna ink up is that cat. I've die cut it out of a black cardstock, so the Happy Halloween sentiment that it has is um, not really visible. But if you apply some white pigment ink on top, it really helps the sentiment to stand out, and besides, it creates that uh, chalkboard look that I like. I'm also applying a little bit of white ink all around the edges. Now I am done with the inking and there is only one more little thing that I have to do to that jack-o'-lantern die. I'm applying some um, foam tape at the wrong side, covering up all the holes. Then I'm going to flip that over and I'm going to inlay every uh, little negative piece. You can use black 
if you want more contrast, but I decided to use that yellow as if uh, the jack o' lantern is lit from the inside. So now all the die cuts are ready to be attached on a card. I'm basically going to create a nice big cluster with them. To me, the most convenient way to work with a bunch of different designs is moving from the biggest elements to the smallest one. So I'm starting with the biggest uh, die cut, which is this cup. It already has that slit created by the die and all I have to do is to take some leaves and berries and uh, play around with them and create my little bouquet. And once I'm happy with their placement, I'm just using a tiny dot of uh, liquid adhesive to attach each element on its place. Then I'm going to attach the entire cup with the leaves onto the card with the foam tape. And by the way, this cup can be used to hold a gift card. And uh, that is exactly why it's called a gift card cup. At this point, I have decided to trim off the handle from the cup because I don't need so many elements at the background. Then I'm going to attach the cat image and I'm using the foam squares as well as the liquid glue. I'm placing it right in front of the cup and sticking it down. The next largest element is that jack-o'-lantern and I'm going to attach it with the foam tape. I was moving it uh, left and right to find the best position for it, but once I'm happy with the placement, I can uh, press the die cut down and it's gonna be stuck. This die is magical cauldron and the die also creates that vapors coming out of the cauldron, but I'm not gonna use them for this project. I'm only going to use it as a flower pot. So again, I'm adding some leaves and berries inside and uh, the slit is also created by the die so you don't have to cut anything additional. This is exactly how I created the larger bouquet. I'm just using the smaller die cuts this time. Then I'm applying some uh, double-sided tape and I'm tucking it behind the cat image. So now all the basic elements of my composition are attached and uh, all there is left to do is to fill in the spaces and uh, balance everything out. So basically, whenever I feel that uh, something is missing in some particular spot, I'm just taking a leaf or a berry die cut and sticking it on that spot. I'm also trying to alternate the colors and uh, not uh, place uh, too many elements that are the same color onto one and the same spot. Even though I was quite generous with all those fall leaves, I had a lot of them left. That is no problem at all, you can always use them on other projects, I just gave mine to children to use on their school crafts and they were quite happy to have them. At this point I have decided to add some uh, more interesting texture to the focal image, so I'm applying glossy accents all over the cat die cut. I'm adding quite a generous amount of glaze and then I'm going to leave it to dry for a few hours. So using fall leaves is a great way to add more brightness to your Halloween cards. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Don't forget that my holiday series is starting soon, so don't miss it out. Have a beautiful weekend!